Hi everyone, welcome back to the Pearl Atelier. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are going to be talking about the Vermeer Rose, which is the plate and the vase that I have behind me. So this is a very, very special plate for me. I have been wanting to collect it for over the past two years. I think the Vermeer Rose is one of the most romantic chapters in the history of Chinese porcelain. A lot of Westerners actually place more importance and reverence for Chinese porcelain than the Asians themselves. It takes pride of place in their homes as a decorative element to elevate the surroundings or it's taken out on very formal occasions. In fact, I only learned about the Vermeer Rose from some westerners who did some documentaries on it so when we talk about chinese porcelain there are four main dynasties which are synonymous with chinese porcelain starting with the tang dynasty so when we are talking about the tang dynasty the most famous one of all is the sun size ceramics and if you literally translate it sun refers to the number three and sai refers to the color so it's tri-colored and if you look at this ceramic horse i actually always thought that it was a, a decorative element in the home but i've since learned that it is being used as a tributary item that is included in the tomb especially for the nobility so during the Song Dynasty, they elevated the Chinese ceramics to make it more refined and the green celadon is very very synonymous with the Song Dynasty as well as the white celadon. I've also done a video on this so if you have missed that, I'm going to be linking it towards the end. And then when we come to the Ming Dynasty, the blue and white china needs no introduction. It is such a well-loved piece of porcelain. This little Chinese bowl once belonged to Queen Elizabeth I and when that material arrived it caused a sensation. In the 16th century porcelain became a cult item amongst the very wealthy. By the 18th century the fever had spread to the middle classes. People are so mad for it that they're getting into debt. They're going bust. They're wasting their family's wealth. In Europe, in the 16th or 17th century, all you would have seen were stonewares and earthenwares, quite uh, rough pots. And suddenly you see something which is thin as paper, white, shiny, translucent, and you wonder what on earth this magic substance is. In fact, early Europeans didn't know what porcelain was. They thought it was some kind of precious stone. The Portuguese and Dutch had been first to the source, so the British aristocracy had to beg, borrow, or steal it. In 1602, they did just that. When a Portuguese boat loaded with porcelain was stolen by the Dutch in mid-ocean, it came up for auction. The kings of France and England bid against each other. And then you come to the Qing dynasties and it was during the time of the Emperor Kangxi to the Yongzheng Emperor who was his son and then the Qianlong Emperor that the Chinese porcelain was at the height of its glory because as I mentioned they were really really wealthy they had a period of peace and stability it was also during that time that they had the Italian monks attached to the Qing court and the most famous of all being Giuseppe Castiglioni who was actually a very very famous uh, court painter in his own right from Italy and he was actually the one who introduced the emperor to Italian paintings and therefore the emperor was exposed to more colors and he personally saw to it that his court painters adopted the same type of colors and the same types of brush strokes so you can see how much it is elevated during the Qing dynasty you can see examples of it from the Christie's or Sotheby's websites 
and also the website of the royal family uh, where you can see examples of the Famille Rose. The Famille Rose is actually a term that is coined by the Western world and it refers to this sort of a porcelain where it incorporates a very rosy hue and it has all these figurals of butterflies, birds and people at leisurely pursuits and you have two groups. One was the Famille Rose made for the Imperial Royal Family and uh, the other category of Famille Rose is the one that was created for the export market to the Western world i.e. to the Americans, British and French whose appetite for Chinese porcelain was still very insatiable in the 19th century. So this is where the second group of Famille Rose, i.e. the plate that I have behind me, was created for the export market. It is known both as Rose Canton and Famille Rose. The details are finely executed. We can date these as being earlier pieces because of the highly intricate details. The one in front of me dates to 1840-1860 time frame and is called Thousand Butterfly. And so I actually um, bought this online from the United States and I've always imagined, you know, when we have a beautiful piece of porcelain, we imagine beautiful surroundings and then the artists painting it at their leisure, but we never know about the story of the laborers who were um, part of the process and the so-called unsung heroes and back of the house those laborers who labored in those caves kaolin miners you know they were so poor that they sometimes mixed in kaolinite with their food much like flour and also it was so damp in there that they got arthritis and when they came out of the the, the tunnels you know after 10 or more days it was so bright outside compared to inside that they had to use cloth to cover their eyes for about half an hour otherwise they'll get blinded. And also the laborers who had the back-breaking work of carrying the porcelain towards Canton 500 miles so that it can be exported to the rest of the world. Of stick stick men. The men with their sticks who are going to carry this huge burden, this several barge loads of porcelain like ants over the mountain before us. The Meiling Pass was cut out of the rock during the Song Dynasty a remarkable feat of engineering by thousands of nameless laborers. Some of the porters were carrying half a ton in a case, slung between poles, four men carrying one case up there. I'm full of admiration and uh, even now I know I should look differently at Chinese porcelain in stately homes. And there's the inscription of the Emperor Kangxi, late 17th century inscription and the inscription above the gateway itself saying the pass of heroes you would almost rather break your own bones than break the porcelain penalties for dropping or breaking pieces could be quite high so if you look at the plate i know that it is a very small plate to own and i realize that the smaller the plate the more tighter the workmanship and the craftsmanship that you can see in it so this is what you call the sacred birds and flowers collection so you can see that the thousand butterflies is encircling the rim of the plate and it is actually very unique because I've seen a lot of examples of it on the internet and most of them doesn't have that 14 karat gold rim Every single element has got a symbolism in Chinese paintings or sculptures or porcelain and I also think personally that's how the term social butterfly came about. So the butterfly represents a high social status and also when you look at the magpie it actually is supposed to be a bringer of good luck and a bringer of good news and also if you look at the element of the flowers on it it has the peony flower so the peony throughout the chinese dynasties have always been the royal imperial flower and it's supposed to represent a high status and also um, everlasting love and as well as that you have the peaches and the plums that signifies abundance as well 
of porcelain throughout the dynasties with each dynasty's emperor trying to elevate the porcelain to a greater height. When you think about how far porcelain has come from the Rockefellers collection of the Vermeer Rose to the Queen's collection of the Vermeer Rose in her personal living room. The new emperors are buying back their history, making Chinese porcelain some of the most expensive art ever to come under the hammer. The lure of porcelain is eternal. Bainbridge vase is the most expensive Chinese artwork ever to come to auction. For the moment at least. It's 43 million pounds. I also forgot to mention the fact that behind me is also the Vermeer Rose vase that my mom had. So I was actually exposed to it all of my life, but I didn't know the term for it. Such an important and beautiful part of the history of porcelain. So the next time you eat off your fine china or drink your fancy teas from your fancy tea cups, please remember why it's called China. Away from me. the way you changed my life.